In this video, you'll learn how to build and customize a nav bar and how to add animations and transitions to your pages. Let's get started. We're going to show how you can add an app bar to our blog reader. Before we get started coding, let's look at how Internet Explorer uses app bars. At the bottom of the screen, you can see Internet Explorer's bottom app bar. An app bar is a piece of UI that presents navigation commands and tools to the user, like being able to change the web address, refresh a website, or pin a website. Internet Explorer also includes the ability to have multiple tabs. Let's right click on a link and say open link in new tab and what we see is the top app bar. The top app bar allows us to navigate between different pages in our web browser. Like Internet Explorer, we recommend that you put navigation in the top app bar and tools and commands in the bottom app bar. You can control how and when the app bar is shown and dismissed by setting the is sticky and is open properties. Now that we've seen how app bars work, we're going to add an app bar to our splitpage.xaml that when you click it, it will open up the detail page.xaml and load the blog post in a web view control. So let's switch over to Visual Studio and let's go to the Solution Explorer, select splitpage.xaml and double click to open it. To make this easier to read, I'll just increase the font size to 140%. The first thing we'll do is we'll hit Shift Alt Enter, hit full screen, and we want to add the style for the button that will be in our app bar. Let's start by defining the style. And we'll use the x colon key to reference the key. And this is the, what we're going to be naming our style. So we can reference it later. We'll call it web view app bar button style. We're going to add a couple different attributes as well here. First, we'll add the target type. The target type represents what is the style is for, and it's for a button control. Next, we'll add the based on. And what this allows us to do is actually base the style on an already existing style. And in this case, we're going to use the app bar button style. That way, we don't have to redefine all the things that represent the style of an app bar button. OK, let's add the end tag. And we're going to add a couple of different properties within our style. We'll use the setter. And we'll set the property. And what we're going to do is choose automation properties and choose automation ID. And we'll set the value of the automation property to web view app bar button. Bar button. Automation properties are used for two things. They're used for accessibility tools, like a screen reader, to have more information about what's currently in our application. And automation tools are also used for UI tests. And those tests allow us to programmatically control different parts of our UI by using the automation ID. Let's close this tag and add our next setter property. Let's add another setter tag. And this time for the property, we're going to use automation properties. And we're going to set the automation property name. So we'll scroll down to name and hit tab. Now let's set the value of that tag. And this is what's going to be shown to users. So we'll say view web page. And let's close our setter tag. Now that we've shown the text that will be displayed to users, what we need to do is display the actual content. So we'll use a setter property. And what we're going to do is set the content property for this button control. And what we're going to set the content to is what looks like a crazy set of characters, ampersand, pound symbol, x, e, 1, 2, b. And I'm going to show what that means in just a second. Let me just close this tag here. And what I want to do is jump to the character map tool. And I'm going to jump out of Visual Studio. And I'm just going to start typing character map. And we see that, and we'll bring this up. Now, the default font for the app bar button style that we used based on earlier is Segway UI symbol. In our style, we set the based on attribute equal to app bar button style. And that was a style defined in standard styles that happens to use the default font of Segway UI symbol. So if you want to follow along in your character map, select the font Segway UI symbol. The reason we use Segway UI symbol is because it includes a number of icons built into the font itself. So what we can do is scroll to the very bottom. And I'm going to click a couple times here. And we'll see this symbol. 
U plus E12B. This symbol is what we'll see in our app button for our view web page button. Using the character map tool allows us to visualize all these different symbols that are available for us to use as app bar icons. To use these symbols as icons in your app bar, copy and paste the code and then set the content property for a button equal to that value. Now that we've defined what our button is going to look like, let's actually add the app bar. And let's full screen this view. And what I'll do is just collapse page.resources and directly underneath it, we're going to define the page.top app bar. Now let's set the page.top app bar. Once we have that XAML tag defined, we're going to add an app bar tag within here. And we're going to set the XAML padding attribute. It should be 10 to the left, nothing on top, 10 to the right, nothing on bottom. Now within our app bar, we're going to add a grid. And within our grid, we're going to define one button and use the button style that we defined previously. We'll set the horizontal alignment of our button equal to right. Now let's define the actual style by setting the style property. And this will be a static resource. And it'll be the name of the key that we defined, which is web view app bar button style. Finally, let's just close this tag. Now that we've defined the button, we want to have that button take an action. So we're going to add a button click event. We'll jump out of full screen mode, make sure that we have the button selected, and we'll switch to our events view, and we want to go down to the button click event. Now for this event, we'll call it view detail underscore click, and we'll click enter, and Visual Studio will create a method for us named view detail click. Next, we're going to add some code in here that takes the currently selected item in the list view and passes it to the frame navigate event so we know the item title. So let's add a feed item type. This will represent the selected item equals and let's get that selected item from the list view. And that will re represent a feed item. Now that we have the selected item, let's make sure before we try and navigate to it that it's not null not equal null. We also want to make sure the frame is not null. And if it's not null, let's read the item title. Selected item dot title. And what we'll do is actually call the frame navigate method. This dot frame dot navigate. We're going to pass in the two parameters, the type of page that we want to load. And that would be the detail page, as well as the item title as the parameter that we're going to pass in. Now let's exit out of full screen mode, and I'm going to click Run so we can see this in action. Select the Extreme Windows blog, I'll select one of the blog posts. Now what you want to do is in here, right click, or if you have a tablet, you can swipe from the top, and you'll see our app bar. Now there's our View Web Page button and our button icon. Let's click on it, and you'll see that it actually loads the detail page with the title as well as the blog post underneath it. Adding animations and transitions. When we talk about animations, we often think of objects bouncing around on the screen. But in XAML, an animation is essentially just a way to change the value of a property of an object. To use an animation, you put it inside of a storyboard. When the storyboard runs, the property changes as specified by the animation. And a storyboard can have one or many animations in it, and each animation specifies a target object, a property to change on that object, and a new value for the property. Now, Windows Store apps use animation and transitions to enhance the user experience throughout the UI. In fact, you can use the built-in theme animations and theme transitions in your apps to match the ones used in Windows 8. A theme animation is a pre-configured animation that you can put inside a storyboard. The pop-in theme animation, which we're going to use, makes the web view slide in from right to left when the page loads. So in our next step, we're going to build a storyboard with a pop-in theme animation and define it in our detail page. To get started here, we're going to select and double-click on the detail page.xaml file. 
I'll increase the font size to 140% so you can follow along. In the page.resources, what we want to do is define our storyboard. Let's start by adding a storyboard tag. And let's set the name property equal to pop in storyboard. Pop in storyboard. So within our storyboard, we also want to define the pop in theme animation. Now let's add the pop in theme animation tag here. The first thing we need to do is set the target. So we'll set the storyboard target name, and this represents the target control that we're looking to animate, and that's content view border. And then we'll set the horizontal offset from horizontal offset equal to 400, and we'll see what that looks like in action. Now our content view border control, if I click control F here, we'll see that it's a border that contains our web view control, and that's what we're going to be animating. Next, we're going to add some code to the load state method to animate this. Select right click and choose view code. And I'll just pump up the font size here. And what we want to do is go to the load state method. And at the very top of the load state method, we're going to be calling that storyboard. Now let's add a quick comment here to run the pop in theme animation. So I'll say storyboard, and you notice I don't get IntelliSense, I'll hit control dot, and just add the using statement for windows.ui.xaml.media.animation, or I could do the full one, but I'll just go ahead and add the namespace here. Squiggle now goes away, and we'll just call this sb equals this.findName. And we're looking for pop in storyboard. And that's going to be as a storyboard. So now that we have a reference to our storyboard, let's make sure it's not null. And we'll use the begin method to actually start the animation. Now that we've added our animation, let's get out of full screen. I'll click F5 to run this. And we want to be able to navigate to our detail page real quick. I'll say view web page. We see that kind of navigated in. Now let's actually jump and try and make this a lot larger and see the difference. First what I'm going to do is select Control KC to comment this out so the storyboard won't actually run and let's run our application. click this, click an item, and you'll see that there was no animation. Let's just jump in, do this again. Now what we'll do is set the property and we'll see the horizontal offset and this will kind of come in and do an entrance from this side. So let's click stop and let's uncomment this. Now with this uncommented, let's click run, select an item, Go to the detail page, and you'll see that little slide in. Just to show that again, let's right click, and you see that quick little slide in as we select items. Mm -hmm.